Hi, I'm Charit, and today I'll be talking about GoSLP, a framework that we built to perform superword-level parallelism-based vectorization with certain optimality guarantees. If you look at modern microprocess, they uh, allow different levels of parallelism, from thread level to instruction level to fine-grained data level parallelism exposed to single instruction multiple data units. In this talk, I'll show you how to better exploit SIMD level parallelism automatically. Programmers can exploit SIMD parallelism in mainly two ways. They could either code using vector assembly instructions or use compiler intrinsics. However, this is cumbersome and requires a lot of expertise. Or they could use compile auto vectorization, where they can continue to code in high level languages and let the compiler vectorize the code for you. This is automated, however, compile auto vectorization can be incomplete. In the sense, it may miss certain vectorization opportunities. In this work, we focus on one variant of compiler auto vectorization known as SLP based vectorization. The key idea behind the superword level parallelism based vectorization is to coalesce or group two or more scalar instructions which perform the same operation and are independent of each other into packs which are later transformed into vector instructions during the code generation, code generation space. But if you look at the SLP vectorization uh, in detail, it involves three main stages. First of all, the compiler needs to select which statements get packed together. Here, in this example, there are two isomorphic groups of statements, one doing uh, divisions and the other doing uh, subtractions, from which the compiler can select to vectorize uh, a given two statements. Once it has selected uh, a particular uh, a statement pair to vectorize, then the compiler needs to decide the statement ordering within a pair. For instance, if it has selected uh, S1 and S2 to vectorize, then it needs to uh, decide whether S1 gets executed in lane 1 or in lane 2. Once all packing decisions and uh, uh, statement ordering decisions are finalized, next the compiler needs to schedule these vector instructions among the existing scalar code. In this work, we look at the first two problems. And in compiler literature, solutions uh, given for these two problems involve greedy, sol greedy algorithms or algorithms which do local searches, or there has been some proposed intractable global search algorithms. Compared to all of these approaches, we propose a tractable global search in GoSLP. What I mean by a global search is we, uh, our vectorization unit uh, is a whole function. More concretely, we reduce the statement packing problem into an integer linear programming problem and then use the capabilities of an off-the-shelf ILP solver to give us the most profitable, profitable packing op uh, opportunity. Once all packs are fixed, then we reduce the uh, permutation selection problem into a dynamic programming problem and then use a custom DP algorithm to search for the most profitable ordering of st uh, statements within a vector pack such that uh, uh, Perm emission of vector permutation instructions is minimized. By doing so, we show that we can achieve uh, seven, uh, more than 7.5% speed up on spec 2017 FP C++ programs. For example, if you look at a benchmark like Imagic, which has more than 250,000 lines of code, we achieve an end-to-end -end speed up of more than 16% compared to LLVM's existing SLP implementation. So, we have shown that GoSLP can achieve, if tractable global search can achieve uh, uh, better speed ups and uncover better vectorization opportunities compared to greedy heuristics. So let's look at uh, the statement packing problem in detail. And to motivate why we need a search and where greedy algorithms can miss uh, 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 vectorization opportunities, let's look at this example. It first loads seven consecutive elements from memory. Uh, where each adjacent load can be vectorized now. And then these loads are used in these division operations to compute intermediate values A1 up to A3. And then these intermediate values are next used, used in the subtraction operations to uh, uh, compute the final uh, uh, values A4 up to A6. The division operations and the subtraction operations are isomorphic, so they, they are, they are, you have opportunities for statement packing. First, let's look at a greedy algorithm that was suggested by Liu in the PLDA 2012 paper. They uh, prioritize vectorizing statements 
that can be used by multiple other vector statements. For instance, this particular load L2 and L3, which, are, which is vectorizable because they are, it's adjacent in memory, can be used in a statement pack that consists statement S1 and S2, as well as a statement pack that consists S5 and S6. So in essence, they start off uh, vector, by vectorizing S1, S2, and S5, S6. And next, uh, you go through its operands and recursively uh, try to vectorize them. So if you go to the statement one, uh, these loads L5 and L6 are vectorizable, so you vectorize that first, and then you go to the second operand, L2 and L3, which is again vectorizable, and then uh, you move on to the uh, already packed statement SV2, here, uh, lo uh, loads L2, L3 is already vectorized, so you don't have to do anything. However, if you look at A3 and A1, A1 is packed with A2, whereas A3 is still scalar. So in order to uh, create this pack, you need to first unpack A1 uh, out of uh, the pack A1, A2, and repack it with A3. This incurs two overhead instructions, one for unpacking and the other for packing. Finally, the compiler needs to see whether there are scalar users outside of uh, the vectorized uh, uh, instructions. And here, uh, scalar statement S4 uses A2, which is already packed with A1, uh, and already packed with A1. So you need to, a uh, compiler needs to emit another unpacking instruction to make this code correct. Finally, their strategy actually uh, uh, generates four vector instructions and three overhead instructions. The next the question is, like, can we do better in this uh, simple piece of code? The answer is yes. For instance, if we instead selected S2, S3, and S4, S5 to vectorize first, and use the same strategy of vectorizing its operands, you will end up with a uh, vectorized code as shown here. Here, uh, we generate five vector instructions uh, while only uh, incurring two unpacking overhead instructions. And this uh, code is optimal for this given basic block. Uh, Liu's strategy, uh, 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 or any greedy strategy, has a specific algorithm which uh, pinpoints what to pack and unpack, uh, where to vectorize or not. But in GoSLP, we do a search, where we search for the most profitable packing strategy, and hence we can achieve this uh, uh, optimality here. Then can we do this search uh, uh, enumeratively? Remember that this is one basic block out of many in an uh, end statement function. And if you look at the uh, statement packing choices, for, for a given uh, statement, if you do pairwise packing, there are O to the N amount of uh, uh, packing choices. And if you think about all uh, statements within the function, there are exponential amount of choices. In reality, this packing, packing problem is equivalent to the optimal subset selection problem, which is shown to be NP hard. So we need to be clever in our search. But uh, uh, it's already NP hard. So our strategy is to encode this problem uh, uh, into an ILP formulation by encoding the best co benefits and cost of vectorization into the objective function of the ILP formula, and then use the, uh, 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 the power of an existing ILP uh, solver out there. And then uh, one thing we noted was that encoding really matters for tractability. There has been uh, uh, previously uh, uh, an attempt uh, to do uh, ILP encoding for this uh, uh, statement packing problem by Larson. There he encodes uh, uh, the cost and benefits per path. What I mean by path is you select a unique uh, set of statement packing opportunities along the path, uh, along a given path of, it, of the code's dependency graph. For instance, if you look at the same piece of code I showed you before, if you selected S2, S3, it has the potential to be used in all of these other packs in the uh, subtraction uh, 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 group. So you have to create ILP, prob uh, ILP problems for all of these paths. And that's it. that is true for S1, S3, and S1, S2 as well. So in, uh, in, ge uh, uh, in general, this encoding scheme is exponential in terms of the amount of isomorphic groups out there. But and uh, we, uh, we found out that this is intractable. But if you look at uh, 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 the costs and benefits of vectorization more closely, they are very local. For instance, benefits only depend on the statements that get packed together. And the costs of packing and unpacking only depend on the immediate users and definitions of those statements. So we can encode locally and still preserve 
a global optimality. So that's what uh, that's the approach we use in GoSLP. So we do it per pack instead of per path. This reduces the encoding complexity to be polynomial and it's tractable. Remember, this is only the encoding complexity and still it's an NP-hard problem and the IRP solution can be exponential. So let's go uh, into detail of how we do it. GoSLP uh, uh, does a pairwise packing first. So if you look at this particular basic block, S1 and S2 are not contiguous in memory, but S3, S4 statements are uh, uh, contiguous in memory and is a potential packing opportunity where as well as any, you can select any of the statements from uh, this isomorphic group of additions. And in, uh, as, uh, in GoSLP, we list all the opportunities out there for statement packing. And the, uh, the, the output of this algorithm is to select whether what statements should actually uh, be packed. So for each statement packing opportunity, uh, we encode the benefits of vectorization as well as the cost of vectorization. And we solve this uh, uh, ILP problem subject to certain uh, constraints. Uh, one, of, uh, uh, one example constraint would be a particular statement can only be part of one vector pack. Again, we, do a, we solve it pairwise first, so we can only guarantee pairwise optimal statement packing and then use it uh, iteratively to form vectors of higher width. Now let's go uh, briefly go into detail of how we do, how we encode vector savings and packing costs for a particular example vector pack. Again, I'll use the same uh, uh, basic block and uh, use S3, S4 as the example vector pack. So we ask the question whether perform, uh, uh, executing uh, the vectorized version of S3, S4 is better than executing the scalar counter, ex executing its scalar counterparts S3 as well as S4. And if this is true, this particular quantity is negative. And we only get this benefit if this particular pack is vectorized. Next, let, let's look at the packing cost. Again, uh, consider the same vector pack. It has the potential to be used by vector pack S5 and S6 as well as vector pack S6 and S7. So if either of these ve uh, uh, packs are vectorized and if the original pack is not vectorized, then you need to uh, incur a mandatory packing cost and this is how we encode that. I'll uh, leave it to the paper to find out how we encode the unpacking cost and non-vector pack packing cost. Now let's briefly, uh, uh, I'll briefly motivate why we need to do a, a, a search uh, to find out the best statement ordering and how it can affect uh, uh, the final quality of the vectorized code. Here again, let's consider this small uh, 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 basic block which is perfectly packable or perfectly vectorizable because it's uh, accessing adjacent memory and those uh, accessors can use can be used in this uh, addition operation. So after uh, packing uh, uh, vector packing stage, we get these uh, uh, vectorized loads and vectorized additions. But if you look at uh, look closely in its uh, use def, look closely look at its use def chain, uh, the values uh, the vectorized values are used in an interleaved fashion or in uh, a reversed fashion. So once you have loaded these values, you need to either permute it first and uh, 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 compute uh, the addition uh, operation, but this incurs two permutation instructions. But rather, what we could do is, we could load the values and compute, uh, uh, on the, uh, compute the addition operation on those loaded values, and then permute the result and store it back to C1 and C2. This only incurs one permutation instruction. So as you can see, uh, the sta uh, statement ordering can have an impact on the final vectorized code. And in our paper, we have formulated this problem as a dynamic programming problem and uh, have given a, 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 a custom DP algorithm to solve it. You can look at, look at the paper for more details. Now, let's, uh, I'll highlight some of the evaluation results that we had by implementing GoSLP inside LLVM's uh, 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 compiler infrastructure. 
So we evaluate, uh, we implemented GoSLP inside LLVM and then compared the runtime uh, performance uh, of GoSLP compared to LLVM's existing SLP vector, vectorizer on SPEC 2006, SPEC 2017, FP, and NAS benchmarks. And uh, in summary, we got more than 7.5% uh, speed up on SPEC 2000 FP benchmark. And here I'll highlight some of the be uh, benchmarks for which we get got more than 10% speed up. And mind you, these are end-to-end -end speed ups on uh, co uh, codes that can have more than 100,000 lines of code. Next, uh, we evaluated uh, 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 our, our GoSLP, uh, compared GoSLP's performance with Intel's commercial compiler. Note that the, this is a closed source compiler, so we had no way to like implement GoSLP inside ICC. So, uh, but I want to show you that uh, the impact of uh, GoSLP has uh, on uh, vectorization. It's an, uh, it's suppo ICC supposedly has a better loop vectorizer than LLVM, but it's, an, uh, it's a less well-known fact that ICC also produces really good scalar code. Uh, so in uh, 16 out of the 20 benchmarks we considered, ICC has a better scalar baseline. So we are already starting at a disadvantage we if we want to do a uh, comparison. And to show uh, the power of GoSLP, I'll go into three benchmarks. And here I'll show you normalized runtimes, normalized to the LLVM scalar code. And once we like turn on its vect LLVM's vectorizer, you get some benefit, uh, uh, some runtime benefit uh, out of it. Note that uh, here it's uh, lower the better because we are showing runtimes. But uh, the interesting fact is ICC scalar code is already better than LLVM's vectorized code. So. Uh, so we are at a disadvantage if you want to do a comparison. Then we turned on ICC's vectorizers. It does uh, somewhat better than uh, uh, its scalar code. But notably, when we replace LLVM's SLP with Go, uh, Go SLP, we outperform uh, ICC's uh, implementation in, for these three benchmarks, even when starting from uh, 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 a bad uh, scalar baseline. More. Uh, uh, more generally, LLVM only performs better in five benchmarks out of 20 compared to ICC's vector, vectorized code. But if we swap uh, LLVM's uh, uh, SLP pass with Go SLP, we increase the amount of benchmarks that run uh, uh, faster than ICC by almost twice. Then uh, we, our compiler solution uh, uh, leverages ILP, so it's exponential and it can uh, uh, give out, uh, uh, it can lead to like uh, a slower compile times, but these compile times are not that slow in the sense like it's not suitable for JIT compilation, but if you want to get uh, the last bit of performance, eight minutes is acceptable. So in concluding my talk, uh, I have shown that greedy algorithms and heuristics are fragile and can lead to missed vectorization opportunities. And if you can do a search when it's tractable, your, it can lead to better vectorization uh, decisions, and moreover, it can result in empirical runtime performance benefits as well. So with that, I'll uh, open up for questions. Thanks. Uh, so I have a quick question. So uh, the compile times that you showed us, uh, how much slower is it than not using the optimization? Uh, or was that just, just the running time of your optimization? Right, it, it, it can be like order of magnitude slow, like. Uh, some of your results had a negative. Yes, uh, uh, that's a very can good question. Can you tell me why yeah. your algorithm yeah. found something worse than the greedy algorithm? Right. Yes, there's still room for improvement. So we rely on LLVM's cost model to develop the ILP formulation. But LLVM cost model is, has a lot of inaccuracies. So we did a, a subsequent work on improving the cost model. Like we, we try to learn an x86 cost model from data. And now we are in the process of plugging that in and seeing how whether uh, we can get even better performance. And another problem is all of these optimization problems are not linear. They are actually non-convex. So can we like develop uh, a better optimization procedures. 
and none of, uh, uh, so in my formulation, we don't uh, consider dynamism. Like for instance, there can, be uh, there can be branches in our code and there can be cache effects, but statically I cannot predict that. So we do a best effort to statically guarantee uh, optim uh, pairwise optimality up to the accuracy of the cost model and uh, whatever information we have. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks, that was a great talk. Uh, so I had a question, uh, in terms of the workloads you looked at, have you looked at any uh, machine learning or uh, neural network specific workloads and how it affects those? Uh, no, uh, no, we just uh, only uh, evaluated on the standard benchmark suits like spec 2006, spec 2017. Do, do you have any thoughts about how they might look? If you tried but, it, why, why haven't you tried it? It seems like a really important workload. I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, but we could try in, in the sense like uh, uh, we wanted to compare it against like existing work, so that's okay. one Well, I would definitely recommend you try that. It'd be interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right, if there aren't any further questions, uh, let's thank the speaker. Uh,